Well, it has taken half a century, but NASA is one step closer to putting humans back on the moon. For After a slow the... overnight crawl, Artemis is now on the launch pad, the most powerful rocket ever, ready for a new chapter in human exploration. Let's turn to NASA's Artemis spacecraft next. It has finally arrived at the moon. 2003, NASA published a technical paper describing their research on the use of a 10 hertz pulsed square wave magnetic field or PEMF signal. So as you noticed, we're going back to the moon. After we lost all the technology and everything else, we're going back. So NASA also made that elusive square wave 10 hertz bipolar that I promise you guys that we're going to build. So in an homage of Artemis making his way to the moon and taking pictures of it, we're going to build the 10 hertz square wave bipolar. All right. We're going to start doing this mechanical because well first of all it's my background that's why i'm strong at control so we're going to create a full bipolar wave dc as per nasa except we're going to do it mechanical i got drawings i got stuff you guys recognize this bad boy i repurposed it we're going to use this to generate our signals i'll explain to you what i'm doing as i do it so first I want to bring up the point that Dr. Pollock, I have the utmost respect for him. As far as I know, he's pretty legit and he has lots of good teaching. What he was saying in his video was that um, due to technical reason, the actual NASA 10 Hertz wave cannot be recreated by anybody is right but he's also wrong and what i mean by that is first of all he's a medical doctor not a electronic guy 10 hertz is 10 hertz that's all there is to it okay guys it's 10 pulse per second 10 signals per second that's a frequency what he meant to say and i'm pretty sure if he was there listening to me he probably would agree with me nasa created a bipolar square wave 99.9999% of the people out there create a unipolar DC square wave, which is not the same. Up until now, I've talked to you guys about square wave is the king based on the NASA research, blah, 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 and the whole thing. Today, we will recreate this full bipolar square wave that I've been working on for quite a while, and you guys are going to reap the benefit of it. And if Dr. Pollock listens to this, contact me, and maybe we can work together and make one of those. Okay. We're going to do it mechanical, and then we'll improve that to make it with uh, MOSFET and H-Bridge and stuff like that later. But for right now, we're just going to do it old school way. I soldered this guy right here, so I got power, and I'm going to bring power to my relay. And then we're going to make that relay click back and forth, which it should. Here we go. You can hear that, right? Let me. This will make us a bipolar square wave. Let's bring this to 10 hertz, see if we can, if the relay will keep up. Uh, frequency plus two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Cannot do 10 hertz. Uh, this is the limitation of We can do five hertz. Let's see if we bring the G cycle down a little bit. We'll have a lot of blonde. Let's go to 30 duty cycle and frequency to 10. Still cannot do it. Okay, we're gonna speed up the process a little bit because I did a little bit of running around. Um, looking for a better relay to do what I wanted to do. And right here, I wanted to see if there was power in this, so I decided to touch it and, yeah, I zapped myself. I don't know what I was thinking, but anyway. Um, so, looking for some relay that could keep up with the 10 hertz, the mechanical stuff is not really good for that. We're gonna switch over to the electronic down the road. But then I found a relay that could keep up with the 10 hertz, but I needed two because I didn't have enough set of contacts with it. We'll talk about that in a few seconds too. So here I am, got that going, and they're keeping up. 
and everything is doing good so now i just had to water them i'm going to show you the schematic here in a second you guys I'm taking you on this journey right now. I would never suggest anybody to build this, okay? This is just to put stuff to the test, basically. We're just playing around, and I'm taking you on with me on this. At the same time, um, I've been asked a lot why I like doing this stuff so much. The reason why I like it so much is because when I get texts of people that I've made a map for, and they tell me how it changed their life, I really hurts me like it really makes me feel good about it right to take the hurts away from people um, I have a lot of friends that benefited from this quite a bit right so my goal of this channel is to spread the word as much as possible and make this accessible to people also I'm going to debunk the industry a little bit because I think there's a lot of scam out there but anyway that's for another day so now I did I want to show you guys something that's pretty <laughs> amazing here I am going to wire the plus and the minus together. We're going to talk about that right away there. But I'm creating a short. I can do that with the relay because of the normally close and normally open circuit. As you can see right there, the NO is normally closed. That means when there's no power to the relay, that switch is open. The normally, I mean, the normally close is closed. The normally open, when there's no power to it, it's, that means the switch is open and there's nothing that flows through it. So I take the negative, and that's a coil right there. Take the negative of the normally open and put it to one side of my coil on the mat. And then I'll do the same thing with the positive to the other side of the coil. So, so far, so good. We've done this a million times together, just with no relay. We just do it directly out of the PWM. The funny part is, is now we're going to take the normally close, and we're going to positive, and we're going to put that to the negative side. So, when the state of the relay switches, we literally inverse the uh, positive and negative to the coil, which makes the coil north and south change up and down. Um, down the road, we're going to do that electronically. You're going to see why we cannot do that with a solenoid. First of all, they're noisy. They make physical noise that you can hear clicking all the time. Two, they make a lot of noises on the electron, like on the part itself now you need a solenoid that breaks before makes that means that it will change the state before it changes to another one right uh, there's another set of relays or coils or uh, motor starter that makes before break and you don't want that and that's me drawing a little explosion there because I was like wow this is crazy can't believe I'm gonna do that it worked as a spoiler alert so as you can see I turned it on and there was no spark and there was no the everything was fine okay here we go we gonna connect this guy over here this guy over here down to one See this line in the middle right here is our zero. This is gonna put that right there. That's our zero volt. Let's go to measure. See if I take one coil out, we're just gonna get half the wave. See that's the top coil. Put the other coil back in. We got the bottom part. Take the top off. We got the bottom part. So that's one coil doing the one square wave, and that's the other coil doing 
the other square wave and then you pile them up together. Okay. Zero. One, two. Still doing that all right. Three. Still all right. Four. All right, five. We're starting to see some distortion. There's not time to drain itself from the. This is what an oscilloscope can do, right? Like we can. Here's my trigger. I was looking for you. We can zoom in and explore. I wanted to pause the video there to share this with you guys. So you see the ripples right there. This is something that happens a lot. Those high powered uh, PMF machine that uses, uh, for example, a large capacitor and they pump like a gazillion volt through the coils because that's the only way they can make a humongous amount of power. And then there's a long delay between pulses because the Solen uh, not the solenoid, the capacitor has to recharge. But you get these waves because it's like an echo going back and forth. Now, the PMF makes an EMF, and then they put their gauze meter on it, and the gauze meter is not quick enough to capture just one of those waves, the peak one. What it does is it calculates all the waves and adds them up. And sometimes when you zoom in with an oscilloscope, you can see those wave, those ripples. Excuse me. They are like like almost a quarter of a second long. Like it's just crazy because of the capacitor of the big bang they get. So they're getting you like two or three thousand gauze. But that's because they're adding like hundreds of those peaks together because the meter is not quick enough to capture just one of them because we're talking about a nanoseconds. And that's, I am pretty sure that's the way it is. That's the way they claim two, three thousand gauze on their machine. In reality, they don't make that. They, they make a fraction of that. So um, that'll be really interesting down the road when this channel starts producing money and we buy uh, better equipment and we start taking them down and we actually start looking at it in reality. I think we'll realize that uh, it's not all what it seems to be out there. We're getting some noise here. Which is alright. This is our first attempt. Pretty sure there's some electronics guys out there right now making fun of me. But you know what? I've reached out to a lot of electronics guys and everybody tells me this is impossible to do. So there's a lot of noise, there's a lot of transient, there's a lot of flyback voltage happening. That's fine. That's really fine. I'm okay with that. We've managed to do something that everybody in the world is telling me you cannot be done for cheap. Phase one achieved. Now let's go to phase two. So I had a few more things I wanted to talk about, that's for sure. I mean, look at my book here, and I had ideas to talk about duty cycles and um, frequencies to boot. But we're going to do that next week. Um, this is a pretty long video already, and there's been a lot of information. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, next week, we're going to talk about duty cycle and square wave. And also, we're going to play with the coils and put them on top of each other and the, do the north-south thing. Uh, that's going to be pretty interesting, too. Um, we're going to start a Patreon page um, to raise a little bit of money so we can uh, get deeper into this. And so just stay posted for that. And if you have any more questions, please do so. I'm getting a lot of emails from a lot of people that have been building their own PAMF, and I'm going to start posting pictures. I'm pretty proud of them guys that do that and girls. Uh, so stay tuned, and we're going to have keep having fun. 
Here's a sneak peek at the pieces I'm waiting for China. And I talked to the sellers and they're on their way and we're gonna create magic with this.